senor. Yeah. You always take a siesta in the middle of the trail? Uh-uh. Only when I wish to block it. Will you climb down, por favor? I want to use the wagon. Yeah? It'll cost you more than you can afford to pay. Move your animal. Now! Ahora! Ángel, Mariano, Ruiz! Vengan acá! Mariano, dispose of our stubborn compadre. On harness the horses, we have no use for them. Amigo, I still cannot see why you bothered. Plainly, this wagon is not the stage. Look again, Angel. Without the horses and the driver, it is no longer a wagon. Por Dios. Hey, Barrique. Look, the stage will be coming around up there. It will stop there. And the man we're seeking will be right here. Stretch of this road, that's the only way I can hold Davy down. <laughs> Changing teams, folks. Might as well get out and stretch your legs. Nice driving, Sam. Thanks, Sheriff. Then he always keeps the coffee hot, Colonel Carlin. How are we doing, Miss Barton? Oh, after that last lap, I could use it. Since we left Outpost, I think you fit every hole in the western frontier. He missed one man. Grand Canyon's too far north. <laughs> Spoken with the patience and hope of a true knight of the road, sir. Mr. Kane, I am a camel in the desert. Direct me, if you will, to that call for the oasis. Right inside, Mr. Fontaine. Hate to disappoint you, David, but the last Indian trouble around here was five years ago. Six years, last month. And why the battle station? Johnny Dade. He's the first killer we've ever had for a passenger. Well, the first one we ever knew about, and he's in handcuffs. I think Sheriff Doolin can handle him all right. Well, you're probably right. But it doesn't hurt to be careful, you know. Just be careful how you handle that scatter gun. across the room like you're on parade, Colonel. Relax, relax. Sheriff, in my command, a manacled prisoner would speak only when addressed by his jailers. This ain't your command, Colonel. It's mine. Besides, I kind of like Johnny's company. <laughs> Story of my life. I always did go for big with discriminating lawmen and beautiful girls. Uh, but I thought you were attached to the California area, Colonel. I was, sir. The Army has seen fit to recall me to Washington for reassignment. Reassignment? From what I heard around Sacramento, rehabilitation would be more like it. I have no interest in the idle gossip of thieves and killers. The editor of the Sacramento Star ain't no killer. He may have done a little thieving from time to time. <laughs> and like some newspaper people, he'll print anything that helps sell papers. My record speaks for itself. <laughs> Two, three, four. How many Mexicans you hang, Colonel? Hundred? Two hundred? During my tour of duty at the Presidio, there was less violence, less crime than in any other period since California joined the Union. Personally, I find nothing remarkable in being recalled to Washington after such a record. Maybe. But I figure some general might have heard about the uh, honorary title the Mexicans gave you. My superiors are not influenced by the babblings of stupid peons. Mexicans may be simple, Colonel, but they're not stupid. 
They know if the crimes committed under your orders are going to be counted, your peaceful season will go down as the bloodiest period in California history. You know what the Mexicans call him? El Carnicero. The butcher. Dane. You remind me of Corporal. I once had my command. He talked a lot, too. Even when he tried to desert under fire. His tongue didn't stop wagging until I shot him. Just under the belt buckle. Sheriff, unless your prisoner closes that mouth of his, I may be forced to take action. By hanging him on a rack like the one you had at the Presidio? Oh, no, Colonel. This ain't your command. You start something and you'll have to face the law. Blue coat, gold buttons and all. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty to gabble like tinkers? There is a lady present. The line is from Twelfth Night, Madam. Act Two, Scene Three, Line 94. We opened with the play in San Francisco. And by the third act, I had the city at my feet. Mr. Fontaine, I was there. Oh, <laughs> it is an actor's prerogative to exaggerate, madam. Actually, I should have said that I had part of the city at my feet. Part of San Francisco, uh, the, uh, shall we say, perceptive part. Mr. Fontaine, I've never seen a real play actor perform. When we get to Suttersville, would you? <laughs> It would be my pleasure, sir. A performance in the very midst of nature's wilds. Yes. Yes. Oh, do you mind? Not at all. All set, folks. Ready to pull out. Even if it isn't true, Mr. Kane, please tell me the roads get better. From now on, Miss Barton, you'll think you're in a rocking chair. Uh, Mr. Dane, I must confess I'm curious. What was it you did? I shot an actor. Get down. You got trouble? Looks like it. But maybe I should... You stay here. Stay put, Colonel. We'll find out what this is all about. This is too well placed to be accidental, Sam. No room to turn around, no place to get by. No sign of the team. Bob! Who's here? Hannah, get him under cover! Out of the coach, all of you! Oh, we've got to get Bob! Never mind. Run for that bank. Hey, don't be a fool! Why should I break a lifetime habit? Come on, moving day. Now, Domingo, we can plug them like apples of a tree. No, 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 Angel. Ripe fruit is always sweeter. And I want to get ours just before he's ready to fall. Get Ruiz and Mariana here. Are you all right, Pa? I'm alive, thanks to Johnny Dane. Just trying to do myself a favor. I figured a bullet might be easier than a noose. Where's Doolin? Never knew what hit him. At first... I thought they were friends of yours. 
Son, when they put these on a man, friends is just a word. Then who... Why were we attacked? Outlaws. Horses and baggage aren't enough reason for an attack. Doesn't make sense. And I wouldn't give her a squad right now. Colin! How does it feel, Carnicero, to be the rabbit instead of the butcher, eh? Think of how you felt, butcher, when you had the soldiers do the killing for you. Now I'm in your place and I'm ordering your death, like I promised long ago. And Domingo always keeps his word. Domingo? Yeah. The California bandito. They say he's another Murrieta. He's an animal. Nothing more. I'm waiting, Domingo! Show yourself, if you've got the nerve! I'll show myself, and I'll take you! But only after you have learned to live like a rabbit! A rabbit condemned to death! <laughs> you can't hear the shadow, Colonel. What does he mean by all that? He's an outlaw, with a price on his head. I caught up with this gang of killers four months ago. Hanged most of them on the spot. He got away. And trailed you this far? Mingo's a proud man. He'd lose his reputation if he failed to avenge those hangings. And I'll tell you something else. He'll kill us all if he has to to get to Carlin. Mingo is a bloodthirsty savage. It wouldn't be like him to let any one of us out of this alive. But what can we do? Well, we can't reach the stage. We can't stay here, so we start walking. Nearest way station, Split Rock, about five miles from here. As long as we stay together and keep moving, we've got a chance. Quite right, King. You lead out with Miss Barton and the boy. Dane, you and Fontaine follow. I'll bring up the rear. And I wouldn't advise you trying anything. Still playing tin god, aren't you, Colin? We haven't got a chance, and you know it, unless you walk out there and take what's coming to you. No dice, Johnny. There's still no guarantee to mingle on any of us out of here alive. We go together. They're leaving. They're going south. Reese, take the south flank. Mariano, stay to the north. Shoot to worry them. Keep missing. But real close, huh? Angel, you and I will keep them running and hiding. Then when they turn into rabbits, we'll take them. One at a time. are getting a little presumptuous. Make him scurry. Yeah. We'd walk away from them, did you? Domingo's just playing his little game. Rabbit and butcher. Un coronel conozco, con cara de conejito, y esperando el día estoy, de verlo bien muertito, el conejito, el conejito, ya no puede caminar, 
porque no tiene, porque no tiene un lugar donde escapar. El conejito, el conejito, y ya no puede caminar porque le falta, porque le falta un lugar donde escapar. Save your shells, Colonel. You heard him just as bad by throwing rocks at him. You'll get tired of his little game sooner or later. When he shows himself, I'll kill him. Or he'll kill you. Mr. Kane, that wound has come open again. You can't go much farther. That bullet has to come out. Time we hold up for the night anyway. How about that old mine down there? That's all we got. Fontaine, give Mr. Kane a hand. Dane and I will cover you. What am I supposed to cover them with? Stand up. Move out in the open. You're going to be the target Domingo can't resist. I feel safer right where I am. I'm not concerned with your safety. Look, if you don't get up, I'll shoot. Domingo might not. Move. Come here. He asks to die. No, no, no. It is too soon. Where are the others? There's a mine in the rocks below. It'll be a long night for them, filled with fear. Get the horses we'll eat. See. So I did. Thank you, Will. starts. Sure, I will. Fontaine, get around back here and hold this man's shoulder. In the world of make-believe, I can play at anything. But I'm afraid I'm not very good at reality. I, I really couldn't. I'd faint. I'll hold him, Colonel. Davy, go over there by Mr. Dane. Pardon, isn't there something I can do? Do as Miss Barton says, baby. Fontaine. Watch the entrance. Watch him. You think he can do that? All set? Take away. Davy. When I was your age, we used to play a rhyming game. I say the first line of an old nursery rhyme. You say the second, I say the third, and so on. First one who misses loses the game. Pop. Baby. I'll start it. Uh, 
Let's see. Hickory Dickory Dock. <laughs> Go ahead. Mouse, run up the clock. The clock struck one. <clears throat> and Downey run. There. My compliments, Mr. King. I should say that to you, Colonel. <laughs> Hickory Dickory Dock. Nobody loses, but it looks like you win anyway. I think your father's gonna be all right. Go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Dean. Does it hurt much, Pop? Like Colonel Carlin says, I know I'm alive. Another inch or two to the right, and wouldn't hurt at all. I can't say I blame you much, Fontaine. I don't care for the sight of blood much either. Especially if it's mine. All right, folks, sorry. Stay right where you are. This way I might have a chance. Here I'm as good as buried. Dane? Give the gun to Colonel Carlin. I mean right now. You do mean it, don't you? Domingo wouldn't, but you would. And you know I won't shoot back. <laughs> Getting so an honest outlaw just can't win. Your gun, Colonel. You're warned, Dane. Don't you ever put your hands on me again. You dare touch Sam Carlin? Colonel, that wasn't necessary! Come, I'll teach you a lesson you'll never forget. Colonel Carlin! Right, that's enough, it's done. Done? It's never done. Not with an animal like him. He's a human being just like the rest of us. And he's entitled to the same treatment we'd expect if we were in his position. He's a lawbreaker and a criminal. And he's forfeited any right he ever had to membership in the human race. You're not the judge of that. The law is. Law? What does law mean in the frontier cane or in battle? Well, let me tell you, it means delay where speed is vital. I live by my own law, the same way our ancestors did, and they had the right idea. You can't mean that. Mean it? I live by it. I call it Sam Carlin's credo. Well, how you live is your business. After we get to Timberline. Until then, he's my responsibility. Your responsibility? You don't even know the meaning of the word. None of you do. Responsibility is command. I've lived with command ever since I pinned on my first bar. Manassas. Bull Run, Fredericksburg, Chickamauga, five different regiments, 5,000 graves. And I commanded everyone, how dare you question my actions? Well, when Grant took Lee's surrender, I was wearing a star. I had the best battle record in my grade. Didn't mean anything. They had too many senior brigadiers in 65. And I was just Major Sam Carlin again, assigned to the Department of Arizona Supply Officer. They tried to bury me here. But I wouldn't stand for it. I fought back. I got another command. And I'll keep fighting back at men like him, men like that Domingo. They've gotten in my way before, but I've beaten them all. You haven't beaten anyone, Carlin, except yourself. Those Mexicans aren't outside because you did your job as a soldier. They're here because you tried to get your star back by killing as many of their people as you could. Putting down uprisings that existed only in your own mind. Domingo is an outlaw, a killer. 
And so are his men. And as such, they're entitled to trial by jury under the Constitution you claim to serve. All right, that's enough. Domingo and his killers are outside. We have two guns, no water, no food, and a lot of rough country to go through before we reach help. Now, if we expect to get out of this, we're going to have to work together, and that includes both of you. Very well, Mr. King. He tried to get away once, and he'll try it again. Next time, he'll kill somebody. I'm sorry, Mr. Dane. I'm really sorry. I know you are. <laughs> Bluffed by a soft-hearted dame. Oh. Something wrong with Colonel Carden. A man doesn't have to have a broken bone or a fever in order to be sick, Davy. You get to sleep. We're gonna head for a split rocket daylight. Yes, sir. Good night. Thank you. I told you, Miss Barton. I told you we'd make it. Wait a minute, Davy. Amos! I'll check the house. Fontaine, you check the shed and corral. Best you stay here with Colonel Carlin. Nothing out back. No horses. Nothing. Go get the others. Amos. It's gone. So is everything else. Food, horses, even the blankets. They can't carry the well away. Water's all we really need. The well's there, all right, but you won't want to drink any of the water. And why not? There's a body in it. An old man. Amos. Un coronel conozco con cara de conejito y esperando el día estoy. He's been ahead of us all the way. Cleaned out the station and set us up like pigeons on a rail. What are we going to do? Make a stand. Draw them out from behind their cover. Colonel, we can't fight. How many bullets do you have? Two? Three? I've got five and what's my belt? We have to keep in the move. It's only about eight hours to Suttersville if we cross that Razorback. That's our only chance. Hey, 
It may be your only chance, Mr. Kane. But there is another way. For me. I'm getting out of this. Fontaine, you're doing exactly what they're waiting for us to do. Maybe they've been waiting for him to do it. But they don't want me. I'm leaving. And you have no right to stop me. Don't try it, Fontaine. Those men will never let you get away. Mr. Dane, for all you know, they might do just that. And there's but one way to find out. Yes. As Brutus said, if we do meet again, why, we shall smile. If not, why, then this parting was well made. Con cara de conejito, y esperando el día estoy, de verlo bien Good luck. Muertito, el conejito, Miss Barton? Gentlemen, Mr. Domingo, Colonel, take him out the back way and start him moving. I'll cover Fontaine. All right, let's move out. I have eyes. He was a fool to expose himself. They left by the back, Domingo. They have little fight left. When the sun has done its work, the butcher will know how the rabbit feels. Because he will have become one. when we get to Suttersville. We can't stop now. Colonel, Miss Barton's not in your infantry. He's as good a place as any to catch our breath. Oh, hallelujah. I never thought I'd wish I was back in that Sacramento jail. I'll scout ahead. Ten minutes, no more.
a man with a hole in his shoulder, you set a pretty good pace. Clean living, Johnny. Clean living. That's what old Doolin used to say. I'd tell him how rugged he was for an old man. He'd say, clean living and a clear conscience. I guess he had something at that, huh? I guess he did. Feeling better? Oh, much better, thank you. But I'm so ashamed of myself. You're the one who needs attention. No, I'm all right. Spoil me when I get back to town. Pop, how much farther is it? Oh, three, maybe four hours. Might as well be three or four years. Domingo's still out there, and he won't go away till he gets what he come after. He can get that in practically no time at all, whenever he's a mind to. As long as Suttersville is a few minutes away, that's plenty of time for Domingo. Don't you see? Simon, you gotta make up your mind. You gotta face up to it. None of us are going to get out of this until... until Domingo gets what he wants. What I told Carlin goes for you too, Johnny. I'm no judge or jury. Look, Carlin's plain crazy. You heard him as well as I did. No colonel acts the way he does without Washington hearing about it. They're calling him back for one reason, and I'll bet my life it's not a promotion. He's a butcher. He's not worth your breath, and you know it. Maybe. That's not for me to say. Say one thing, though. This has nothing to do with Domingo or El Carnicero. You say he's crazy, he's not worth anything. What about Bull Run, Shiloh, Gettysburg? Are they worth anything? Now, it's men like him that made this country what it is. They kept it all in one piece and the chips were down. Cost them all a good deal. No, we made it this far with him, and we'll make it the rest of the way. All of us. Well, one thing about a walk like this, Miss Barton, makes for a slim figure. You call this a walk? If it's the same to you, I'll ride the stage. Stay fat. Just as you said, Domingo. Only now they start into the arroyo. Yeah. On into my hands. Reese, get behind them. Seal the trap. Conejito, soon we will see who is the coward. On your knees, beg for mercy. Then I will think about giving you back your worthless life. 
Colonel, you're back. You're a perfect target. Sergeant, order up the troop at once. Order them up. The troop, Sergeant. Run us out. Cold nerve, cold steel. Best way. It's the only way. Always has been. Sergeant, pass the order. Fix bayonets. I'll lead this charge myself. Colonel, there'll be no charge. Sergeant, you must realize this could lead to a court-martial. However, I'll overlook your insubordination and repeat my order. Sergeant, fix bayonets. Colonel, it's Simon Kane. There is no troop. It's just us and we're cut off. Sergeant, that was a mistake you may live to regret. If this troop isn't ready for battle by the time I count three, I'll take care of your court-martial right now. One. Colonel. Two. <laughs> Take over, Lieutenant. The command, all yours. He's finished. Maybe it's better that way. Yeah, maybe it is. All right, Simon. There's only one bullet left, Simon, but I'll use it if I have to. Throw that 44 over here. Don't be a fool, Johnny. Tell Domingo that his butcher's dead. You know better than that. Domingo can't afford to let anyone walk away from here. Come on, throw it over. Get over there. I did want to be an officer and gentleman. Mr. Dane, you can't. Well, you're an educated lady. You got any better ideas? Miss Linda, this may sound kind of crazy, circumstances being what they are, but I like being with you. I'm sorry I won't be able to buy you a drink, a soda or something. I'm sorry, too. Better get back, thanks. Johnny, I still think we can make it. Simon, you know as well as I do, it's the only way to do it. Give me 30 seconds, then start out along the north side of the canyon. Don't stop for anything till you get to Suttersville. Mr. Dane? And now, Davy. 30 seconds, then you're on your way. Johnny. Uniform looks pretty good on you. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? All right, Domingo! Let's get this over with! All right, we go. Our little game is over, amigos. Now we'll take the prize.
buried him up there. Domingo and two of his men. You know, I never asked him where he was from. Or what it was he'd done wrong. Under the kind of trouble we went through, you learn an awful lot about a person in a very short time. Whatever else he was, Johnny Dean was a man. You better stay in the coach. It's a cavalry trooper. Is the soldier dead? No. Looks like the bullet went clean through. He's bleeding bad. You gotta get him to a doctor. It's not something we can do. I'm a salesman, ma'am. I know a great deal about fine wines and whiskeys, but oh, next to nothing about how to stop bleeding. There's only one thing to do, that's cauterize it. Miss Lorenz, there's a blanket in the coach. Get it. Put it under his head. You, get a fire started. There's not as much blood as was before. Well, that's good. Other soldiers live near here. Yeah, there's a fort to the north called Wyatt. In Mexico, soldiers always go with other soldiers. He's accustomed here to go alone. <laughs> no, ma'am, not in these parts. Miss Perry! Miss Perry! You won't believe it. You won't believe it until you see it. Won't believe what? What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. That's gold! It is gold. That's just what I said, ma'am. Where'd you find it? In the gully. There's boxes of it. Boxes, I tell you. Hey, come on, I'll show you. You stay with the trooper. You know how to use this? Now, keep your eyes open. It's an army wagon. Well, whatever it is, it's really loaded. Well, there it is. What'd I tell you? At least we know why the trooper was shot. Yeah. If he was shot for the gold, that seemed pretty likely. Whoever did it couldn't have looked very hard for him. There's only one thing that bothers me. Why I don't see any other troopers around. 
Now, he couldn't have transported this by himself, could he? No, I don't think so. The rest of them were probably shot, just like that one up there. Look at that. $50,000. It's an army consignment, all right. This one says the same thing. That one, too. Only 40000 here. <laughs> We've been shortchanged. Look at that. $190,000 worth of gold. Now, that's almost enough to have a good time on, isn't it, Mr. Perry? Yeah, enough to buy an awful lot of trouble with. <laughs> oh, that's heavy. We'll come back and get the gold later. We better get that trooper fixed up first. Bigger Indians. Maybe they attacked the trooper. No, I don't think so. He'd taken his supplies and his clothes. Besides, the trooper was shot. Digger's never been known to carry a gun in his life, much less know how to use it. Then, uh, they're not dangerous. Well, I once knew a wild dog that wasn't dangerous till he got some friends. They look like cave people. It's just about what they are. Digger Indians. I don't believe I ever heard of them. They, they look so different, one from the other. Well, that's because they've been chased from different tribes. Apache, Osage, Sioux, all of them. Hell, they're not much use to anybody, much less their own people. Outcasts driven into the hills. The reason they call them diggers is because they dig in the ground for grubs and roots and things like that to eat when they can't bag or steal. Mr. Bruster, you better get that knife. Stand by with that whiskey. To stop the bleeding. Put the bandage back on. Don't you think we ought to get out of here? Uh, we're all right for now. We are? Well, I wish I felt as confident about that as you seem to be. You see, it's this way. Two, three, five diggers, you got no problems. They keep a distance. 10, 20, 30, you got problems. Just like any mob, strength in numbers. Crawl all over you like locusts. Yeah? Well, what if those three are waiting for friends? Well, then we got problems. But this soldier boy can't travel yet. That's good. Glad we got that out of the gully before dark. Oh, you want me to help you unhitch your horses? Now, if we unhitch him now, the Indians will run him off before morning. No, 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 no. You must rest now. Will he be all right? Well, I don't know. Always a chance of infection setting in. Mr. Buster. I know how anxious you people are to get to Albuquerque. As a matter of fact, I'm overdue in Timberline myself. That soldier boy there could use a doctor soon. Where are you going to find a doctor in this forsaken country? Fort Wyatt. But it's two days out of the way. So that kind of leaves it up to you. Well, it... all right with me. Huh? And me. Good. One more thing. The trail of Fort Wyatt leads to the north. North is the heart of the digger country. I don't have the right to put you people in added jeopardy. I have waited a long time to see my cousin's farm. I can wait a little longer. And I guess my customers will just have to go thirsty. 
could. It'll cost us two days, but it's two days less we'll be saddled with that gold. Besides, I got an idea. Whoever shot him is liable to come back and get it. Did you hear something? Now, you'll see them or feel them before you hear them. Still heading toward Mexico. Yeah, you're going a lot slower, too. The tracks is less than a day old. I was too late to pick him up today. We'll make camp here for the night. Tracks. It's like a stagecoach or a freighter. They must have picked them up. Took the Fort Wyatt cut off. patient coming along. He is sleeping again. See all those Indians all along the way? Popping up, scurrying around like a bunch of field mice. Well, if it'll settle you any, I figure the fort's got patrols out looking for the trooper. The closer we get to it, the more likely they are to give us a helping hand. Why don't you get those bed rolls in? <laughs> Who's gonna sleep? It's not that I'm afraid of dying, mind you. But not at night. Uh, no, daylight's the best time for dying. Why do we have to stop, Mr. Perry? Why don't we just keep on going till we get to the fort? I don't mind traveling at night. But the horses would. You going to keep those horses harnessed again tonight? I believe I will, just for you. <laughs> Go. Take it easy, fella. Something I have to do. It's a goal you're worried about. We've loaded it on the stage, all of it. And it's so safe as long as these good people keep an eye on me. I will fix you something to eat. It'll make you feel strong again. We don't have much left of the emergency ration, just some bacon and oatmeal, but it's nourishing. What's your name, soldier? Tibbs. Julian Tibbs. My name's Perry. It's Miss Lorenz. Mr. Brester. Howdy. Say, you don't happen to have any of that whiskey on you, do you? Miss Perry, I happen to have some of the finest brandy this side of the Atlantic Ocean. Take a slug of that, soldier. You feel up to telling us what happened? There's not much to tell. Well, I'd say the combination of a fortune in gold and a bullet in you contain certain elements of high adventure. Oh, outfit was transporting the gold to Fort Wyatt. We were hit by Apaches near Soda Springs. I made a break for it on the supply wagon. That's when I got hit. 
All that gold weighing you down. How'd you get away? The rest were pinned down by the fighting. Did you run into any other troopers? No. Guess I was lucky. I'd say you were. If we hadn't found you when we did, you'd have been a goner. I owe you something for that. Say you got shot near Soda Spring. You know you've been carrying that wound a long way. I was in no shape to know which way I was going or for how long. Before I passed out, all I remember was some Indians spoke of my team. I know, we've seen them. I'm hoping they don't give us any more trouble before we get to the fort. Fort? Yeah. Well, that goal is quite a responsibility. I would imagine you'd be as happy as we'll be to get to Fort Wyatt. Yeah, yeah that, that goal's a great weight on my mind. Yeah, it is very swollen. It's very hot. Just how big was that war party that attacked you? I didn't count them. The reason I ask is if the Apaches out in force is going to be mighty uncomfortable for folks hereabouts. I guess so. Well, I'll make a full report at the fort. When did you say we get there? Tomorrow afternoon. A man who claims to be frightened of Indians, he sure sleeps soundly. I think perhaps he's a much braver man than he pretends to be. You haven't had any rest either. You know, even angels of mercy need sleep. I'll start to see if the soldiers are right. I thought you were sleeping. Bobby? Oh, thanks. Don't go. Remember you when I came too. I opened my eyes and there you were. Soft words and a cool hand. You are feeling better now. I'm all right. I just don't feel like going to sleep yet. You know, when I was a kid, whenever I'd get hurt, <laughs> that was most of the time. I used to wait till night so as I could look into the dark and listen to the quiet till the hurt went away. Has he gone away? Lots of ways to hurt. Crazy things your brain thinks of when you, your mind's on fire. Yesterday when I woke up, I thought I was in heaven. The thing that bothered me was I couldn't figure out what I was doing there. <laughs> That's all right, Mr. Brasser. The Indians aren't attacking. It's just your turn to stand guard duty. Well, you mean I was sleeping? Well, it just shows you a man can get used to anything. Keep a watch along the riverbank. Where are you from? Mexico. Do you know the country? I've been there. Mine was a very small village, but very nice. I lived there with my mother and my father. And the bandits came to the village and they were killed. So I'm going to live with my cousin in Albuquerque. He has a farm there. I have dreamed of this for a long time. I will be there soon. Best thing you can do is go back to Mexico. Why do you say that? Because you work and sweat on a farm and all you're digging is your own grave. Farm is no good. You have been hurt by the land. Oh, I forget what I said. You've been nice to me. I, I don't want to spoil all your dreams. What is life without dreams? Oh, what it is, I suppose, is not much. Then you must find a dream. Where? In your heart. Guess I won't have to look that far. Well, I'm going to turn in now. Good night. Good night.
now I'm going to have to tie bells around your neck. What are you trying to do? What's this all about? Well, for some reason, our patient doesn't cotton to the idea of going to the fort. That reason has to do with wanting to go for yourself, now, doesn't it? Hmm? No, no, it was the horses I was figuring on starting a ranch. Then you are a thief. Ma'am, like the Bible says, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. Who are you? Well, let's say I... Not a very good soldier. And after saving your hide, you were going to set us afoot with us surrounded by savages. I thought about it. You could have walked to the fort. Dick might have something to say about that. Well, you'd had a 50-50 chance. That's one the army's going to give me. All right, come on, take cover by the coast. Is it Indians? I don't know. Dick has never been known to ride a horse, but I gave up being surprised by anything when Mosey parted the Red Sea. Captain Eli, United States Cavalry at your service. And greetings, Captain. Now, you took ten years off my life, Captain. I thought you were Indians. Sorry if we frightened you. We were just about to make camp for the night we saw your fire. We are in luck. Got a prisoner for you, Captain. I have reason to believe that this is the man that held up the gold shipment headed for Fort Wyatt. Your assumption is correct, sir. I was in charge of the convoy that was robbed. We lost his trail for a while, but uh, Providence and Trooper Quartz's keen eyes led us a true course. Thought you'd all been killed. Sorry to disappoint you, mister. We three are the only survivors of the engagement. About the gold? Oh, it's all on the stage. And it's all yours, Captain. I uh, have trouble taking care of my own money. Well, that's splendid, splendid. The Army is much obliged, and will show its gratitude in due time. You can depend on that. Oh, uh, you're the driver? That's right. Luke Perry. Miss Lorenz? Mr. Brester. How do you do? I was taking these people to Albuquerque when we came across this man lying wounded in the road. Well, I'm very glad his wound wasn't so severe as to deprive me of the pleasure of watching him hang. Uh, you folks wouldn't be having some extra food, would you? Trooper! Mind your manners. Captain, I'm sorry. It's my manners that need minding. I just took it for granted that you're going to stay the night and share dinner with us. Oh, uh, thank you. We lost most of our rations in the attack. I will fix you something to eat. Thank you, ma'am. Trooper Haig, take charge of the prisoner. Yes, sir. And then these outlaws, eight of them, and in army uniforms, all. Joined my company at Soda Springs, and that very night as we were about to make camp, they suddenly turned on us and opened fire. Oh. Because while they had us pinned down, he made off with the gold wagon. The plan, I imagine, was to join up later at some prearranged rendezvous. Smartest holdup I ever seen. Well, where did they get these uniforms? Were they deserters? No, that was the smartest part of the whole thing. The captain Joe is totally court. Let him tell it. Thank you, Trooper. Indeed, that was the cleverest part of the plan. These eight uniforms came from a squad of men who had been sent out to reinforce my company. The outlaws found out about it and jumped them before they ever reached us. Were they all killed? Oh, yes, sir, ma'am. It's wiped out. Well, how do you know that? One of the outlaws confessed before he died. You see, when they joined my company, we were taken by surprise for the best of all reasons. We expected them. A brilliant plan, you have to admit. You know, Captain, for a man who's been taken, you sure think a lot of the way that it happened. Always. Always appreciate the tactics of your enemy. It's one of the first rules of war, son. Well, I think we can worry about that gold in the morning. And I suggest that you people get a good night's sleep, because my men will stand guard. Court, uh, take the first watch. Oh, no, you take it. Hey, I'm all tired Good out. bickering. Toss a coin. Oh, I... Toss a coin. Uh, soldiers aren't what they used to be. Uh, during the war, I saw more respect and discipline out of raw recruits. Yep. Well, I reckon the last couple of days for a men better pick me. No, I guess not. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Perry. You'll just put down where you can be located. I'll see to it that the Army rewards you for your services. Same with you folks. I appreciate that, Captain. You know, there's one thing I never turned down. 
That's a reward. I'll give you all that information at the fort. Well, that'll hardly be necessary. Just lend me a horse for the prisoner. We'll take him and the gold down to the fort. You people continue with your interrupted journey. Well, uh, you might understand that you're going to load all the gold on the horses now. You've done enough for us already. Albuquerque's a long way. I don't want to hold you any more than necessary. Uh, look, Captain, man, I don't want to tell you how to run your business, but those horses couldn't possibly carry 800 pounds of gold. 800 pounds? Wait, you didn't figure the convoy to carry that much. Shut your mouth, Court. All right, Mr. Brester, get their guns. Now I know why people bite coins to see if they're real. Go on, Court. Talk a little more. Or maybe you'd rather fill us in. You were so admiring last night about how clever the robbers were. Because you were bragging about yourself, wasn't it? Vanity. Vanity's my weakness. That and money. How much is 800 pounds of gold? A hundred and ninety thousand dollars. A hundred and... That soldier friend of yours said it was 19,000. He wrote it on a piece of paper. How'd I know he left a zero off, huh? If I'd known the exact amount, I'd have been prepared for it. And why didn't you tell me last night? You were too busy explaining how brilliant you are. Oh! And if I'd known I had an ox brain for a son, I'd be prepared for that, too. You got no call hitting me, Pa. And if you waited for me at Eagle Crossing like I planned, we'd be safe in Mexico now. I waited for you as long as I could. I would have bled to death these folks hadn't picked me up. Goes to show we all make mistakes. So it's a family affair, huh? Well, you can finish this squabble behind the stockade at Fort Wyatt. Mr. Preston, give me that gun. Tie him up. <laughs> pounds. Well, it's smart of you to catch me that way. But that means now, instead of just a horse for Julian, I'm going to have to ask you for the loan of the whole stage. Well, the way it stands now, I don't guess it's up to me to deny offer. <laughs> you hear that, Court? If you could talk as smooth as that, I'd run you for the legislature. <laughs> hey, look at here. <laughs> All I want for us is to get out of this valley pronto. By now, the Army's got a pretty good idea the goal's been taken. They'll have every soldier in the territory out looking for us. Fort Wyatt's ahead of us. No telling who or how many behind us and a heavy stage dragging us. We're gonna go on over Digger Pass into the Badlands. That's a good idea. We get that far and the whole United States Cavalry won't find us. Well, what are you gonna do with us? I was gonna let you go if you hadn't have found out. But now, knowing what you know, if you run into a real army patrol, you'd hurry them after us before I could get that clumsy stage out over the pass. <laughs> When I have a difficult problem, I take the simplest solution. I'm not a violent man, not in my heart. But I can't take the chance of you sending an army patrol out to me before I can get that stage into a safe place. No, Pa. These folks saved my life. Well, what have I got here? I thought I beat all those fancy notions out of your head. They keep popping back again, I'm gonna have to keep on beating them out. I'm not soft anymore, Pa. You done a good job on me. But as far as I'm concerned, a debt's still a debt. All right, son, what do you suggest? Let's take them with us. Hey, what I'd do if I was going through a digger path, I'd keep a lot of hands with me in case the Indians gave me trouble. They may not be bad down here, but up in them hills, we may need every hand we can get. He's got a point. First time I recollect you two ever agreeing on anything. Well, we agree on not wasting pretty women, don't we, Julian? And furthermore, Pa, if the Army catches up with us, we can use these folks as hostages to trade with them. If possible, we might need them. All right, son. You sold me. Is that a promise? You want me to get a lawyer and draw up papers? Now, folks, you have what I call in my business a reprieve. But you remember, you so much as sneeze without my telling you to, all bets are off. What about Mr. Brester? What about him? Want me to take the bullet back? The animals do not bury their dead. We cannot just leave him on the ground. Since he's gone to heaven, I'll never meet him to apologize. Well, ma'am, you better sit up on the seat with Julian and Mr. Perry so I keep an eye on you. Get aboard.
Never knew a whiskey drummer yet that didn't run low on samples. you want? Oh, not too much conversation. Go away from me. Leave me alone. Shh. You want somebody to wake up and think you like this? You don't want that, do you? No way! Leave me alone! blazes is going on. I was just being neighborly, that's all. I just offered Lady a cup of sugar. <laughs> Told you to stay away from me. I can get you out of here almost as good as kissing, don't it? Huh? Out of you, boy. That's what I always hoped to see. You're showing the gumption I knew had to be in a son of mine. I still say kissing is better. Go on back to sleep, all of you. Come on, sir. Now you can take Hague's turn. The fresh air will pick you up. Oh, son, I am so proud of you. Stay with me a little while. Sure. Are you all right? At least Mr. Brester got what he wanted. He did not die at night. I, uh, I'm sorry about what, Hig. I'm sorry. Look, as long as you're being sorry, what about Mr. Brester and all those soldiers and their families, huh? What about that? That's why we have orphan asylums. Look, you did me a favor, and I'm doing you a favor. And that's all it amounts to. What happens in between is no matter to me. Understand? Is it important to you we understand? No. Well, for me, I understand only simple things. I understand it is wrong to kill and to steal. I understand the animals you feed with are evil. It's all a matter of which animals you feed with. If you're gonna feed with lambs, you're gonna get clawed by the lion. In this world, you gotta go out and get your own claws. You buy them with gold, lots of gold. You gotta get it by clawing lambs. This is not God's world. No, no, it's, it's man's world. It is what some men would make it, not what God want. Carry an extra wheel? No, I'm afraid we'll have to refit this one. Besides, the horses could use a rest. All right. Why don't you get busy and make something to eat? Well, 
so far them diggers haven't bothered us none. You know, I bet we get out of this thing without no trouble. Well, I hope so. You gonna take all day? Oh, now, Haig, let's not be so impatient. Bad for your digestion. Eli, mm. what do they want? I could grunt, make myself understood. I'd ask them. Well, they probably just want something to eat. I'll fire a shot off there and scare them away. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Better give them some food. They're not so brave on a full stomach. Why don't we give them what's left? Never seen those diggers up close before. I'd kind of like to take a look at them. They got table manners like you, Court. I always thought Indians would fight before they'd beg. Those aren't ordinary Indians. They're pariahs. Pariahs? Hey, ain't that what that preacher up there in Phoenix called you, huh? A pariah? <laughs> a pariah! <laughs> Tell me something. If I'm supposed to be a pariah, how can they be? They're animals. Well, you don't have to look like them, Court. They don't look like each other. But you all have something in common. You're not quite human. Why don't you get back to your work? Well, go on, tell me some more. Well, there's not much to tell. You know, in every tribe, there's always those Indians who are a little different. Kind of weak, you might say, to compete with other members of the tribe. So when they try to get by with just taking, not doing anything for anybody else, they, they drive them out of the tribe, up into these hills. They live up here like scavengers. Pretty much the way buzzards live. Are you comparing me to a buzzard? <laughs> no, I didn't say that. You did. You know as well as I do that a real man won't scrounge on the food that other men have worked for. That's the difference between you and... and the rest of the human race. Now you shut your mouth. Julian, help him with that wheel. I'm gonna get the horses ready. Is he writing poetry? No, I still got a couple of lines left for a tombstone. Here lies a boy who wanted to be a man, better man, but he didn't know how. Better? A hundred and ninety thousand dollars to buy the best living there is. Well, I hope you enjoy it, especially when you figure out that you bought it with her life. You don't really think you'll let us go, do you? What I care about her. Paul said he'd let you go. He'll keep his promise. You got crazy? You've been watching this days the way you should. You see them devils trying to steal our gold. It's not true. They have no use for gold. Pa, she's right. They don't even know what gold is. They meant no harm. It ain't the first time you've seen good Indians. Get the wheel on. Let's get moving. I'd think twice about going on if I were you. Up until now, I'd say you had a chance of getting through without any trouble, but after this, you'll never make it. Just the same, we're moving on. Just how good do you think the promise of a madman is? He kills because he likes to kill. Why?
Oh, but well, you can bet they see us. He just up and left. Yeah, there's snow on July. Luck this time, mister. Stage can't get over these. Maybe them diggers ain't half as stupid as they look. Well, we gotta go back, that's all. Go back to what? The waiting arms of the hangman? Oh, we have to. The stage can't get by. I know the stage can't get by, but our horses can. Well, then we won't be able to take all the gold. No, we're not taking any of it. You getting religion? Oh, I'm getting an idea. We'll bury that gold right here. Well, what do you figure? We get a string of packed mules and come back for it later? Right. After the Army's lost some interest in us. Well, I don't think it's a good idea. And I know why you don't. <laughs> You're concerned about how I plan to keep it a secret, huh? Well, don't you worry about me going soft. I'm going to protect our property. You get a couple of shovels, you start digging a hole right here. Big enough for all those gold boxes and then some. I'm going to do a little more for you than I did for Brester. <laughs> Boy, you're breaking your promise. Jogan! If you weren't my son, I'd tell him to dig that hole a little deeper. We'll do it ourselves. Hold it, Paul. Drop your gun. You too, Hague. Oh, there's just got to be another way. You raise a boy hoping he'll turn out to be a man, and what do you get? There's another way, Julian. You have to shoot me. You're going to have to kill me to stop me. You think you can do it with me looking at you? Can you do it with me staring you right in the eye? No, you couldn't. All right, give it to me. I think I'm going to need a nurse this time. Do me a favor, will you? I will if we can. Don't bury me here. I, I've been thinking about what you said about the digs, about them being outcasts. Well, I never had the chance to live near decent folks. If you'd just bury me near some nice little town, I'd like to try and... It may not work. I'd like to... I promise. Just a promise I hope I can keep. The Indians, why do they suddenly disappear? You know, I'm a rebel by enlistment. I never thought I'd be so happy to see a Yankee patrol. Now we got some help, we can clear the road and have an escort into Albuquerque. May I ride on the driver's seat with you? Sure, if you want to. And after you leave me, if my cousins 
Will you visit me sometime? Maybe. Maybe your business brings you to Albuquerque often. No, oh, my business is in Timberline. That's way to the north. Maybe you could come up there sometime. Not on business. Maybe. kiểu là là có đít lọ rồi còn gì nữa nhưng mà chị cũng không nhà chị cũng không lúc trước ấy thì cảm giác áp lực vậy tại vì nhà nhà mình thì đẻ cả hai đứa là con gái ấy thế là xong chị bảo em chị bảo là thế lúc em mang thai em cũng nghĩ để con trai con gái không xong rồi mà chứ lúc đấy chị cũng nghĩ đến việc đẻ xong rồi là tính sau rồi là còn nghĩ đến đẻ con trai con gái nữa <cười> nếu như mà có money thì để bao nhiêu cũng được thật sự luôn thật sự luôn tại vì là thực sự là không phải là bây giờ nó chỉ là điều kiện kinh tế thôi em chỉ áp lực khi em nuôi con bởi vì không có kinh tế tiền để sửa tiền đi học cho con mà. đúng sự thật này đấy thôi chứ còn ngoài ra nó cũng không phải là cái gì nó quá là kinh khủng mà là không phải là sợ đẻ là do lý do này lý do kia mà chỉ có qua chẳng qua là sợ không có đủ kinh tế nuôi con đâu chứ còn nhiều nhiều nhà thật sự luôn là nếu như nó có kinh tế thì để ba bốn đứa nó vẫn mua được cần được hết chị 
xem mấy nhà ấy chứ nó vẫn cứ để ra xong rồi vẫn cứ đi làm bình thường mà cảm giác kiểu áp lực thôi rồi bây giờ ví dụ chẳng hạn nó nhỏ thì muốn học trường tốt tốt một tí ấy. sau này nó lớn thì nếu như có điều kiện thì lại cho muốn nó đi du học chẳng hạn ở Vin thì cũng có khác gì đi du học đâu bà cái phí ừ. học phí ở Vin nó cũng ngang với bọn 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 đi du học đấy như thế chứ kiểu bây giờ mà bảo sao mà đi du học không đỡ à, vừa rồi thì mình vừa hướng dẫn cả nhà mình tô xong hình một uh, que kem như thế này nếu như cả nhà thích video của mình thì mọi người ấn like xem và subscribe kênh của mình nha